Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter one talking about the testing process and as a part of this tutorial, we are getting into the next topic that is 1.3 test analysis. As a part of this segment, we are going to explore more about what exactly test analysis is. And of course, to recall from the foundation level certification, you have already dealt about what exactly test analysis is, which is basically to analyze and review the test basis and report any kind of inconsistencies, contradictions or omissions or any kind of unclear or ambiguous requirements to the author back. And of course, this helps you to understand what exactly is the requirement all about and helps you to determine good and efficient test cases in order to test a particular functionality. Of course, from the foundation, we do remember that there are not only just that during the review of the test analysis of uh, various test bases, which could be a requirement test design, uh, or even if you talk about the architectures, the codes, algorithms, use cases, anything which you may be using as a part of the overall test process, you will definitely be reviewing them and reporting any kind of issues or anomalies related to these documentation. Also, at the same time, you look forward to determine the test conditions as a part of this process. I, identifying the test, process, test conditions, which is equal to the test scenarios, will help you convert the requirements into testable uh, test conditions or scenarios. And at the same time, uh, the test data necessary for executing these test cases can be parallelly identified. And uh, also, you talk about determining what environment will be required to test these requirements. Because of course, the environment can only be determined once you have understood what exactly the requirement is all about. And uh, following that, of course, you can uh, start building up or looking forward to what infrastructure and tools will be uh, required at any point of time during the execution to support your execution or testing process. Beyond that, of course, in the advanced level, being a test manager, you need to be very, very careful and determine that what kind of details will be required in order to list the documentation of the test condition. Because not every time you go for the detailed documentation of these conditions. Don't forget that test condition is one of the work product of this particular phase. And what kind of detail, what level of detail would be required will be determined based on several factors which we will be looking into just after some time. So make sure that being a test manager, you determine when exactly the test analysis should begin and make sure that all the test bases which you are going to review should be available at that point of time. And if in case uh, you see that things are going to be slightly delayed, then you have to align your activity according to that, taking the necessary control action to make sure that everyone uh, will be engaged with one or the other activity by then and coordinate with the other uh, project stakeholders and uh, project development manager to see that or the you know products will be or work products will be available at a very short notice to continue as beginning with the test analysis more than that of course test analysis is the activity that defines what is to be tested in form of the test conditions right because uh, not everything can be just directly testable or derived from the requirements just like that you need to document the certain test conditions to uh, see how exactly you're going to cover them during your testing life cycle. The test conditions can be identified by analysis of the test pieces, test objectives, and product risk. And all of these become a factor to determine how you're going to cover them. The test condition should also be traceable forward to the test design and other work products as those work products are created. So now, of course, the test conditions which you're deriving right now should be well managed in terms of being traceable to the test cases or the defects which you get related to that in order to make sure that how these ten test conditions are being covered as a part of your test executions. So, of course, if you don't have a good traceability uh, tracking the change request or if in case your requirement has been modified in future, then how exactly your test cases will be sufficient enough to address the same uh, you know, requirement or not, maybe you would have right to, you know, you might be writing some more test cases at any point of time to uh, cover this new change which has happened related to your requirement. The test analysis for a given level of testing can be performed as soon as the basis for testing is established for that particular level. Of course, we're talking about the levels as well. Like, you know, we talk about in unit testing, integration testing, 
system testing and many other non-functional levels then analysis of those levels can also begin here and definitely the basis specific to that will be collected from the different sources and different stakeholders and you can parallelly begin with the analysis of performance testing or security testing and many other non-functional quality characteristics formal test techniques and other general analytical techniques can also be applied here uh, in order to identify the test condition for example applying risk-based testing to identify critical areas complex uh, uh, modules which are associated with some type of risk then of course you can identify those critical test conditions or maybe even if you talk about requirements based strategies which can be made use of like overall approach of the testing to identify key areas which you need to target as a part of your testing don't forget at the end of the day you want to uh, satisfy your customer with the uh, very effective and efficient testing so it is very important additionally as a part of this tutorial uh, we are also talking about there are a number of factors to consider when deciding on the level of detail at which that's to specify the test conditions uh, level of detail basically standard uh, stands for how much detailed the documentation should be because sometimes you write brief documentation for test conditions and sometimes you write uh, detailed test conditions. Now, it basically is indirectly proportional to the requirements of the test basis which you're referring. If in case your test basis is very brief, you try to uh, make your test conditions more detailed. But if in case your requirement or test basis are more detailed, then you just write simple and brief logical test conditions and you don't involve a lot of time and a lot of effort in order to write your test conditions. But that's not all. That's not all. That's just one of the entities. Similarly, we do have many other factors which influence the level of detail required for writing test conditions. For example, the level of testing which you are trying to write it for. If it is for unit testing, could be brief. If it is for performance testing, security testing, you might have more detailed test conditions because a lot of factors influence the non-functional testing. Level of details and quality of the test basis which you're having, I think I just gave you that example to begin with that how exactly the basis uh, details will influence the level of detail for the test condition. System and software complexity, if you think things are more complicated, more complex, then you would try to be more detailed to cover every aspect of that complexity. Don't want to miss anything important. Project and product risk, of course, if you have any identified risk associated with that particular uh, work item or requirement or design, then definitely you will try to be more detailed compared to be brief. The relationship between the test basis, what is to be tested and how it is to be tested will also determine. Because if you're going to be uh, applying more in-depth testing at certain level, then of course uh, the details has to be furnished accordingly to support and satisfy those executions. Software development lifecycle in use, of course, if you're talking about the traditional models like waterfall and V model, we obviously go for detailed test conditions, but if it is agile, then of course you will keep it limited to a brief documentation. Test management tool being utilized, or like how exactly a tool will be managing, because not every time the tool allows you to upload heavy documentations, or sometimes the tool allows you to manage everything like Confluence pages, which has all the details, uh, within a particular test management tool which can be very well accommodated to refer at any point of time. So if tools are going to manage huge data, then definitely you will get into the details because you can refer that anytime. So of course, more the details, better it is to refer and understand any sort of requirements. Level at which the test design and other work products are to be specified and documented because of course your further levels uh, of uh, detail which you're going to follow for writing the test cases and uh, further executions and lot many other things like test steps and so on will also influence that. For example, if you're planning to write your test cases uh, to be more concrete, more detailed, then test condition can be very lightweight or very less detailed. But if in case you are preferring to go for more exploratory testing or error guessing or checklist based testing, then you should not waste your time writing detailed test conditions because the people who conduct experience-based testing are domain experts. So you don't really have to give them all detailed information. They know exactly what is that you're going to test and what is that we are looking for. They already have the good knowledge of typical type of defects and so on. Skills and the knowledge of the test analyst, the one who is involved in the analysis, of course, uh, you know the background and the knowledge what this person has. If this person is not from 
uh, the perspective of this particular type of application, then of course the test condition should be detailed. Otherwise, if he knows everything, could be brief as well, because he will be always there to assist the team members in order to cover uh, the requirements and the uh, you know codes and all. The level of maturity of the test process uh, of the organization itself. For example, if you're talking about the CMM levels, the higher the level of the maturity of the organization it may require a greater level of detail because it, it becomes a part of the standard, it becomes a part of the protocols which you have to follow based on the level which you have acquired as a part of capability maturity model. And this will help you to, of course, fulfill the criteria which the body wants, uh, which has accredited you with the higher level of maturity, like Six Sigma, CMM level, or ISO, whatever you're following and availability of the other pre project stakeholders for consultation. Now, generally in Agile, you do have uh, customer representatives and uh, product owners to assist you now and then about your activities and the progress on the project. Of course, if you have those consultants available, then probably you don't land up creating a very detailed documentation because it could be time consuming and you want to save a lot of your time and making use of this representative will definitely uh, help you to understand all the requirements and details. So you don't really uh, fall behind to write your lot of detailed documentation when it comes to HR. Well, this was just a part one of the test analysis. There is a lot more to explore. So be patient, as I told you earlier, because the tutorials are going to be slightly longer, but of course you will get a very good understanding of each and every concept as a part of the certification. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and respond to them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.